From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Amberian in Helena. Montana regulators are seeking public input on proposed new rules for wolf hunting and trapping, aimed at reducing the overall wolf population in the state. I'll have more on what they're considering. As more people are getting vaccinated, more employers are asking employees to return to work. But how is this affecting child care facilities? I'm Annie Johnson with the full story coming up. A oh, gorgeous day shaping up 630 for you over southwest Montana. It is Friday, Holly Brantley, inside Chet Lehman. Outside, Chet, how's it feel out there right now? It's absolutely delightful out here. 50 degrees right now in tropical four corners. Sun's uh, peeking through the pine trees uh, on our way to a uh, high right in the average range. That's what it looks like on the Montana State University campus. Currently around southwest Montana, temperatures in the 40s and 50s. A little cooler in West Yellowstone at 37 degrees. 49 in Dillon, 45 in Butte. 48 in Ennis, and as I mentioned, the uh, temperature is going to be right around average for today. Uh, delightful, and then change in store for us as we head into the weekend and into the final week in June. I will have the detailed forecast of that in about 10 minutes. Thank you, Chet. Well, first here, Montana's Fish and Wildlife Commission advanced a slate of possible new regulations for wolf hunting and trapping after state lawmakers directed them to take steps to reduce the wolf population. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian reports. During this year's Montana legislative session, lawmakers gave the Fish and Wildlife Commission the authority to adopt a variety of new tools for expanding wolf hunting and trapping. Commissioners voted Thursday to put all of those possible tools forward for public comment. The legislature passed three bills revising laws on harvesting wolves. Senate Bill 314 specifically tasked the commission with reducing the state's wolf population. It authorized them to consider increasing the number of wolves someone can take with a single license, allowing the use of bait while hunting and trapping wolves, and permitting hunting wolves at night on private lands. House Bill 224 required the commission to allow the use of snares for wolf trapping, and House Bill 225 let them extend the wolf trapping season. Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks staff gave commissioners a variety of options on how aggressively to use each of those tools. They also recommended restricting snares to private land and extending the trapping season only in eastern Montana. The commission decided to move forward broadly with draft regulations, and they say they want to hear what the public thinks about each of the potential changes. Proponents, opponents, but very specific and, and in, in as much constructive comments as we can around what we are tasked to do by the legislature. FWP currently estimates the state's wolf population at around 950. Supporters of increased hunting and trapping say that's too high and could lead to smaller elk populations and more wolf attacks on livestock. Representative Paul Fielder, who sponsored HB 224 and 225, said FWP's recommendations weren't going far enough to reduce wolf numbers. We left some discretion up to the Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Parks and the Commission, but if you do not address the wolves in Region 1, 2, and 3, where 90% of the wolves are, uh, you're failing to meet the legislative intent. Opponents of the expanded options for taking wolves say they're not necessary, they go against traditional hunting ethics, and they could harm other species. We already have sufficient wolf management. We have plenty of opportunities to kill wolves. The population is stable now, so we don't see a need to implement these seasons. A 30-day public comment period on the proposed regulations will open on June 26th. FWP will also take comments at an online public meeting on June 30th. The commission is expected to finalize the regulations at their meeting August 20th. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Last year, almost 330 wolves were harvested in Montana. FWP says it's not clear yet how much these new options could increase that. If more than 450 are taken, the agency recommends taking a look at possible changes to the regulations. Well, President Biden says he has officially reached an infrastructure deal with a bipartisan group of senators. The $1.2 trillion proposal includes $579 billion in new spending focused on physical infrastructure, including transportation, water, energy, and broadband internet. A major sticking point they overcame, how to pay for it. The deal includes redirecting a portion of unused COVID relief funding and enhanced tax enforcement. A deal on infrastructure would be the first significant bipartisan bill struck between the new administration and Congress, but it still has a ways to go. For a country that has been living 
20 years of our parents and grandparents' infrastructure, this is a big deal. My colleagues and I have been working overtime for weeks to hammer this agreement out. Negotiations like this are always difficult. Uh, and like with every good compromise, neither side got everything they wanted. Senator Tester said the bill will create good paying jobs across the entire state and maintain America's competitive edge over China well into the future. Congressional leaders are aiming to bring legislation to the floor next month before August recess. Meantime, U.S. Senator Steve Daines and House Republican Conference Chairwoman Elsie Steve Frank are stepping up pressure on by the Biden administration to ease restrictions on the closed Canadian border. And Daines tells MTN's Dennis, Dennis Bragg he hopes the move will place additional pressure on Ottawa as well. The border has been shut down since last year because of COVID restrictions, with the Canadian government recently extending those closures to July 21st. Senator Dane says he's amazed and shocked that's the case when people are still crossing from Mexico. The southern border, because of President Biden's policies, remains wide open to illegal immigrants and drugs, and the northern border in Montana remains closed. And President Biden just extended the northern border closure to July 21st. So I can't wait any longer. Montanans can't wait any longer for President Biden to do what's right and open the northern border. The Restoring the Northern Border Travel Act would require the Department of Homeland Security to expand the list of essential cross-border travel within the next 10 days. That would include allowances for individuals traveling to visit immediate or extended family members who are U.S. citizens or a permanent resident. Right now, many families have been unable to cross the border from Montana and other states into the Canadian provinces, leading to separations lasting more than a year or expensive flights and quarantines in Canada. This is having a direct impact on so many of our business across uh, northern Montana is having impact on families. Uh, we're heading into, of course, the, the big tourism season. This is a lost opportunity uh, for Montana businesses. We need to open up the northern border. Other changes would allow individuals to cross if they own or lease property in the U.S., travel for business and site visits, or traveling to board a flight at a U.S. airport. The bill calls on the administration to begin developing a plan to fully restore non-essential border crossings within 20 days. But will congressional action convince Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau? It's kind of that old saying, Dennis, lead, follow, or get out of the way. It's time to lead and get the northern border open. We're going to put pressure to get the United States side opened up, and that would pressure, I think, uh, Trudeau to get Canada opened up as well. In Missoula, Dennis Bragg, MTN News. Now, Senator Tester says he's continuing to hear firsthand from his neighbors around his farm in north central Montana on the negative impacts from the continued border closure. He says, and we quote, each day that passes without a resolution is a hit to Montana's family, farmers and ranches and rural communities along the border that rely on its commerce to make ends meet. Tester adds he'll continue to press for the Canadian government to reopen the border to all trade and and travel as soon as possible. Well, 638 now, it's time a transition. Students are going into summer and some parents are going back to work. MTN's Annie Johnson explains how these transitions are affecting childcare facilities and what other factors are involved. School is out for the summer, which means a break for students and teachers. But what about year round childcare facilities? I feel like every day I feel like I should be making some tough decisions on whether this you know, if we can continue to um, operate in this environment or might have to shut our doors. This child care owner isn't seeing a problem with enrollment. She's experiencing a problem so many other Gallatin County business owners are facing. We need more staff, obviously, to take care of those kids. Um, and the, the staffing shortage or finding qualified people that are willing to come and work has been a major, a, a real struggle. And she's not the only child care facility experiencing this. We have had um, some programs closed and some programs have to close, you know, certain classrooms and things like that just due to low staff. As far as enrollment goes, it's been pretty normal. Enrollment for childcare is always an evolving thing. I haven't seen too much of a, of a difference or a shift per se, one way or the other. The switch the facilities have been seeing has been easy. It's 
kind of been relatively smooth transition back in. It hasn't been like a huge surge, you know, May 1st, all of a sudden everybody's back in childcare. It was more of a, of a smooth transition as people started to go back to work. For this daycare owner, she finds herself in a similar place of survival, not from enrollment challenges, but just day-to-day -day decisions. Gotta make some tough decisions. I'm hoping that, that, you know, that place we were in about a year ago where I was like, if we can just survive these couple months, few months, we'll, we'll be fine. Um, I'm still optimistic. If you or someone you know is qualified and interested in the childcare profession, now may be the perfect time to start. Reporting in Bozeman, Annie Johnson, MTN News. Well, we've got more coming up here on Montana this morning, including astronauts set to take to space today for some repairs to the International Space Station. What's being fixed is coming up, but first uh, here's a look at what you'll see at 7 on CBS this morning. Good morning. Ahead on CBS this morning, stories of hope as rescue efforts continue for those missing after the deadly building collapse near Miami. We talk with state officials about the investigation into what may have caused this tragedy. Also, we're in Minneapolis as the city prepares for the sentencing of Derek Chauvin for the murder of George Floyd. What family members hope to hear from the judge and pride celebrations are taking place across the country. Hear from parents of LGBTQ kids and adults about their journeys and why they are proud. See you at 7.